Where's oil going and, and what's it worth? Well, I think what you can see is that oil is going to continue to go up uh, and uh, tens and tens of dollars the way it's going now because what the, the supply of Russian oil, which was supposed to not be sanctioned and to avoid this kind of disruption, is de facto sanctioned. U.S. is considering, as you were talking before, actually embargoing Russian oil. And so there's going to be a bad scramble for barrels, for replacements. It's all logistics. And um, so that's going to drive the price of oil up. And it's added to it that it's in a crisis that involves two nuclear powers, one of whom has actually brandished his nuclear weapons uh, in the course of the last two weeks. Yeah. And that's Vladimir Putin. Right. I never, never thought we'd, well, nothing surprises me uh, anymore. Dan, let me, let me ask you, did, did we go from being energy independent two years ago to being energy dependent again? How, and it, is that true? And how did it happen? I'm talking about the United States. Well, well we went through a little bit of, uh, we got up to energy independence on a net basis. It went down, and, and, but I think we're back up. This year, uh, oil production uh, in the U.S. will rise by about a million barrels a day. And the other miraculous thing that's happened is that we only got a uh, LNG industry started in 2016. In 2022, the U.S. is going to be the largest uh, LNG exporter in the world. And half of the uh, LNG exports that are going to Europe right now come from the United States, which is underwriting European security and keeping them in a stronger position than would otherwise be the case. Well, Dan, which, by the way, is the reason, which that's one of the reasons uh, Vladimir Putin hates shale, because of, we compete with him. As you have watched uh, capital dry up for companies that uh, look for fossil fuels and produce fossil fuels because of ESG pressure or pressure from uh, the government, pressure from so many different places, what, what has been your uh, take on that, and, and do you see things changing? Have we hit a, a point in time where where that might the pendulum might swing back, or are we already going down that road, the point of no return? I I think you see it er eroding somewhat when you see what's happened to the energy stocks. It turns out investors actually want returns as well as the the virtue that comes from ESG. And, and they see the, those returns there. And I think that's something that's going to be a strong theme here at, at Sarah Week. It's, you know, we planned it around kind of the energy transition questions, but energy security is front and center. The amnesia that the United States has had about energy security after we became energy independent has been shocked by the invasion of, uh, uh, shocked out of existence, at least for now, by the Russian invasion and the establishing how important these flows of energy are to the world economy, to stability, you know, and ultimately to world peace. Well, I guess nuclear is maybe going to be the biggest beneficiary of, of this new way of thinking, is it not? And then, and then how long does it delay the transition to renewables and for how long? Well, some people actually believe that nuclear has to be part of the transitions, that you don't do it with wind and solar because they're intermittent, that they're not available at all time. You need baseload electricity. And what is now people are looking at are small nuclear reactors that would, uh, that would be manufactured in plants and therefore would be low, lower cost. And, uh, you know, there are 62, it's, yeah, 62 research companies and uh, research institutes that are working on advanced nuclear power. So I think I just you get the feeling it's back. I talked last week to two CEOs to prepare for Sierra Week, and both of them in the conversation mentioned small nuclear. They wouldn't have done that two or three years ago.